The Truth About Goblins Chapter 16 I cried, said Sephira, shaking her head. I just got so caught up in it all. I really wasn't expecting to bawl like that. Well, you weren't the only one, said Timothy, taking a seat against the wall. There was hardly a dry eye in the room, I'm sure. They looked out across the ballroom, watching as more guests filed inside from the auditorium. Everyone was so well-dressed, it was a pleasure just to sit back and watch the couples enter the room. The woman looks so beautiful, said Sephira, just like everything else in this place. Timothy nodded. She was right. Everything about the old theater had exceeded their expectations. The show on its own had been brilliant, and now, with the whole crowd retiring to the massive ballroom, it really did seem as though the night couldn't get any better. Upon entering the room, it felt as though they had stepped into a palace, the walls adorned with rich, vibrant paintings fit for royalty. Overhead were the chandeliers, the marble tiles shimmering with the light as though the floors were made from gold. And of course, to complete the extravagance, a long table had been placed against the back wall with heaping plates of exotic food so that no guest would find themselves needlessly famished. It was by this table, seated on two chairs near the wall, that Timothy and Sapphira watched the arrival of the other guests. They also happened to be within arm's reach of a plate of chocolate truffles, which didn't go unnoticed by the two. Sapphira grabbed a truffle, eyes wandering to the live orchestra at the front of the room. They're quite talented, she said. Do you think there will be dancing? The song came to an end before Timothy could answer, the musicians commencing a waltz. Within a matter of minutes, the dancing had begun. Sephira was enchanted yet again. Just look, she exclaimed, breathless. Oh, it's like a fairy tale, Timothy. She turned to him, a feverish energy in her eyes. Can we dance? Uh, he fingered his tie nervously. Maybe not this time. What? There was no hiding her disappointment. Why not? Come now, Sephira. He eyed her knowingly. You know how clumsy I am. I'm likely to knock someone over. That's no reason not to try. She jumped from her chair and took hold of his hand. Just one dance. But he was adamant. You go, he said, slipping his hand from hers. I'm certain you'll find an eager gentleman in this room. She stood before him, reluctant and slightly heartbroken. Go. Waving her away, he smiled. Find someone who can actually dance. I'll be fine here. It was only when a young man presented himself that she found the courage to turn away, leaving Timothy on his own. He watched her from his seat, trying to distract himself with the plate of truffles. And try as she might to forget him, Sephira found herself constantly looking over her shoulder, her eyes drawn to the chairs at the wall. After two or three songs, she returned to her seat. You're not tired, are you? said Timothy, raising an eyebrow. You seemed so energetic just a few minutes ago. I needed a break, she replied. I wanted to make sure you were all right. I'm fine, he insisted. However, I may have eaten one too many truffles. She laughed. You and your chocolate. It's a weakness, he admitted. Aside from tea, obviously. Obviously. She leaned back and sighed. Are you sure you don't want to dance? He cast her a stern look. You're not holding back for my sake, are you? Because if you are... I'm not, she said, crossing her arms. I told you I needed a break. He sighed and turned his attention to the orchestra, pursing his lips in thought. This tune sounds familiar, he said. It's a folk dance. 
You should try it. Oh, I don't know. She looked down at her feet. I might wait a little longer before going out again. He turned to her. It seemed he was about to speak to offer protest, but he said nothing. He just sighed again and leaned back in his chair. Unable to look him in the face, she watched the dancers take their places, the woman lining up on one side, the men on another. There was still time left to join. I wish you would go, he said quietly. She shut her eyes against his words, but a few seconds later she got to her feet. You're unbelievable. She hurried to join the dancers and didn't look back. Just in time, she found a place between two women in flouncy dresses facing a gentleman in the other row with dark skin and a head of jet black hair. Unfamiliar with the dance, she looked to everyone else for the next step. The men bowed, the ladies curtsied, and the dance began. The music was slow enough that she could follow without difficulty, swaying and spinning along with the other women. Soon enough she fell into the flow, the movements coming all on their own. The men stepped forward, met by the row of ladies, and in the blink of a moment, Safira was arm in arm with the tall, dark stranger. Their eyes met as he winked at her. It took all her resolve not to look away as the color rose to her cheeks. And then she was back amongst the women, turning as the music jumped in tempo and glancing left and right while trying to follow along. Within a moment she was back in place, moving from partner to partner, skipping excitedly as the musicians quickened their rhythm. She had forgotten Timothy completely. Immersed in the dance and the challenge of keeping up with everyone else. One moment she was spinning, the next her hands were grasping those of a stranger's, and soon after that she found herself standing in the row once again. As confident as she felt, however, the music was getting faster. There was no longer time to check her movements against those surrounding her. There was a spin, a skip, a few steps back, and then she had to step forward, meet a partner, and spin away. Settling back into the row, her mind raced to remember what came next. Was it the skip? Did she have to step forward? All too quick, it was time to make the decision. She was supposed to spin. Or was she? Even before she stopped, she felt she had made the wrong step. She was lost in the crowd of dancers still spinning. Her heart skipped a beat. She started to panic. Where was she going? Someone swept past her. Another person nearly knocked her over. She whirled around, despair taking hold of her as she realized she had missed her partner. And then someone took hold of her hands. Timothy! I've got you. He pulled her back, seamlessly weaving into the crowd. Safira struggled to focus on the dance. I can't remember. This way, he said, gently pushing her back into the woman's row. She was back at the beginning, this time facing Timothy. They all stepped forward one last time, each dancer finding their partner. She linked arms with him once again, the dance slowing to a stop along with the music. And, following the crowd, they each stepped back and took a final bow. Rising from her curtsy, Zafira gazed at him, eyes wide. I thought... But he stopped her, shaking his head. I'm sorry. What on earth do you have to be sorry for? She stared at him. You're so odd. I just can't wrap my mind around the way you think. Apparently, neither could he. Now that the dance had come to an end, he stood before her awkwardly, shifting his weight from foot to foot as he struggled to find words. But before he managed to speak, the music began again, smooth and slow. He took a step back. 
Oh, no, you don't. She grabbed his hands and didn't let go. You're not leaving me alone this time. But I... Please? She caught his gaze. This one's easy, nice and slow. He was about to say something more, but Safira didn't give him the chance. She took hold of his shoulder. My waist, Timothy. His eyes went wide. I, uh, what? Ever so patient, she slid her fingers off his shoulder and onto his arm, guiding his hand to her waist. This goes here. Lifting his other hand, she moved it away. And this goes out here. Finally, she closed the distance between them. You see? Easy. Doubtful as he was, he gave a slow nod. His gaze dropped to his feet. Look at me, she said. Not at the floor. His eyes met hers. Good, she smiled. Now just sway back and forth. You hardly even need to lift your feet. He tore his gaze away and looked around the room, assuring himself that they weren't out of place. Eyes on me, Timothy. When he looked back at her, she was frowning. I don't understand it. You were so confident a moment ago. Uh, he forced a nervous laugh. I guess I was a man on a mission, so to speak. I guess the thought of rescuing you seemed romantic. I mean, not romantic as in romance, I just meant... Timothy. Her tone was stern, but a smile tugged at the edge of her lips. Please relax. Try to relax. He took a deep breath, the worst of his nervousness fading. All right, I'll try. He glanced at the orchestra. But can we move away from the music? It's a little loud over here. Swaying gently, they made their way across the room. Now that Timothy wasn't so jumpy, the dance was quite enjoyable. I'm sorry, he said. I wish it wasn't so hard for me to keep things together. I just don't understand why, she said, clearly concerned. Well, I... There was that timid smile again. I wanted this evening to be perfect. For you. His eyes met hers once again. I really want you to have a good time. She was stunned. I am having a good time, and it would be perfect if you were having a good time too. He stared at her a long while, silent. A shadow passed over his eyes. You remind me of someone. Someone I once knew. His voice was quiet, almost a whisper. She never gave much thought to herself. It was always the happiness of others over her own. Understanding worked its way across her features. Your wife? A sad smile. He had to look away. I. There was a sound, a noise like rolling thunder. It was quiet, distant, but the walls shook with its force. The crystals on the chandeliers rattled overhead. The guests began murmuring, glancing left and right. Safira felt Timothy's fingers tighten around her own. He pulled her close. What was? Everything went black. There was no sound. Nothing. How long it lasted, she didn't know. It seemed an eternity before the silence lifted, replaced by throbbing pain and a ringing in her ears. She opened her eyes. There was fire. Flames licking across the floor of the ballroom. The ringing faded into screams, guests running into the hall. She felt someone grab her arm and lift her to her feet. Timothy? No, a stranger, one of the staff, leading her away from the burning ballroom. She whirled around, searching for his face in the chaos of smoke and flames. Timothy! This time she cried out loud. 
When he didn't answer, she turned against the crowds and forced her way into the smoke. But someone pulled her back. Before she could fight against it, she was swept out the ballroom. Timothy! Her screams were stifled by the crowd. Timothy! But there was nothing she could do. The walls shook, the floor shifted beneath her feet. Already she was in the passage, helpless amongst the frantic guests. Staff at every turn directed them out of the building, trying to maintain control, but their efforts were hardly successful. Everyone had fallen victim to terror, to confusion. Safira fought to stay upright, realizing she would be trampled if she lost her footing for so much as a second. Desperate as she was to find Timothy, she had to keep up with the crowd. Towards the exit they went, flanked by fire wherever they turned. The heat was coming from all directions, explosions shaking the theater. The carpets were set ablaze, the tapestries on the wall nothing more than hanging ashes. As the throng turned a corner, a chandelier fell from the ceiling, bringing with it more fire. The beauty of the old theater, the opulence, the fairy tale, all of it was in flames. Safira felt cold air surge past her face, the crowd stumbling its way onto the bridge. Forced ahead by the people behind, she was wedged between strangers dangerously close to the edge of the chasm below. The ground shook beneath her, the whole bridge jolting as another explosion rang out. Thrown to the side, she grasped the railing and didn't let go. She didn't feel the tug at her neck. The cord she was wearing came undone. Before she realized what was happening, the necklace slipped from her throat, falling past her feet and into the mines below. She screamed, more in shock than fear, and reached out to save it. But it was too late. Her crystal, the necklace she had been wearing, was lost. Already it was fading into the darkness beneath her. There was nothing she could do. Dazed, stunned, her lungs aching from the smoke and her head pounding with the noise, Safira was pulled away. She glanced over her shoulder, her eyes wandering past the heads of the frantic crowd, but there was nothing to search for. The theater was gone. Only a pile of smoke and blackened stone remained. The roof collapsed. She looked to the faces, hundreds of faces, but she couldn't find him. She cried out for an answer, but none came. The smoke choked her screams, and his name was lost on her lips as she was carried across the bridge, away from Timothy, away from the old theater. Hey, hi, I'm your narrator, Miranda Eastwood, also the author of The Truth About Goblins. If you liked this chapter, remember to add, follow, or subscribe to this channel so you can hear the next one. And if you didn't like this chapter, <laughs> oh well, I can't really do anything about that. In any case, I just thought I'd let you know about my Patreon. You can check it out if you'd like to throw some support my way. It would mean a lot to me. Not to mention there's loads of extra exclusive content that I only post on Patreon. While I'm at it, I'll mention that The Truth About Goblins is now available as a complete audiobook, and you can get it wherever you get your audiobooks. Thanks for listening.